after the killing of uh, George Floyd, there was this uh, young millennial, like you put it. Of course, really, there are young millennial. I remember, for example, the one that started the movement in the United Kingdom was almost a teen. No? So uh, this is very important. It's very important to point out that this, there is this generational shift in the mentality, yeah. in our understanding of history, of yeah. who we are, and also on how we react to the situation in front of us. So I believe, I always say in, in, in the case of Mother Africa, for example, that why today uh, many Africans, many of us, are still comfortable uh, putting our head low as it says, sad, sad to the oppressor. A generation of Africans are coming. They are not going to do that. They are going to ask for what is there without minding what is the consequences. And they are the ones that are going to save Africa for what it is. Not many of us who are too scared to be, to be shot at. Because, anyway, let me leave it there. Now, there was this message that needed to be proved to the people that black lives also matter. That is, that is the message, it's a very simple one. No? It doesn't mean that other life doesn't matter anymore, but it just means that black people's life equally matter. Of course, you cannot put all this one in the, um, in the banner, no? it would be too long. So it simply was black life matter. Anyway, what I'm taking out from there is that this message needed to be understood. All right, this is 2022. Do you think that message was understood? I, I believe so. One of the things that helped me kind of wrap my mind around the Black Lives Matter Matters movement as a person who is Generation X, I'm over 50, so I'm younger than a baby boomer, but far too old for the compliment of um, being a millennial. But the way I kind of wrap my mind around how they owned their own identity formation and their role in history. I kind of took it back to Greensboro, North Carolina, and those college students uh, from North Carolina A&T who sat at that counter and said, actually, we're not going to go through the back door today. We're not going to do it to go today because the prices we pay for our food are the same prices that all the other customers pay. We're going to opt to sit at this corner, at this counter today. And they were met with violence and they were met with resistance and they left there wearing their food uh, that they had paid for because other people were not ready um, for them to sit at that counter. And that's how it makes sense of the Black Lives Matter movement, that there are even some Black people who are not ready uh, to, to hear the affirmative, unapologetic assertion that Black Lives Matter. And I'm proud of the young people um, and their responses. Although you may not be ready for us to make that stance and push identity formation that way and push uh, social justice in this direction and push uh, racial justice in this direction and push equity in this direction, you guys might not be ready, but we've got to move. And sometimes Oh, baby, you, you, you have to accept that, that when the generation comes into its own, that there may be some who are not ready uh, to push in that direction, but they still got to, and this is an expression I believe the young people use, they still have to walk in their truth. And so I'm proud of them for walking in their truth, even though I don't fully understand everything about how they process and move forward. Um, but they have every right, every historical right to contribute to this historical narrative and put their stamp on it, just as assuredly as those North Carolina A&T students did when they sat at that counter um, to push um, freedom in the direction that it needed to go. So I'm really proud of them. I really am. And, and, and I don't have to fully understand. I don't have to fully agree. But what I can do is recognize their right uh, to press in that direction and their historical need uh, for them to do so. And I think, I think it had an impact because I'm watching it reverberate uh, around, the, around the globe and people getting it who didn't get it before. There were people who were touched 
uh, when the Black Lives Matter movement took up the banner of that injustice, that murder that happened in broad daylight. Um, and they and they finally got it and they started taking to the street. They started writing checks because nothing else had really clicked for them before. And they said, we can't have human beings be forming and behaving in this way. It's not acceptable. People in Britain said it was not acceptable. People in France said this is not acceptable. So it's not an issue of the ongoing tension between black and white Americans, which probably will never go away. That's not it. It was bigger than that. It's we have an expectation of how humans treat other humans. And it's a baseline. And murdering people in the street is unacceptable. And I think that that message hit home. All oh, right. I will be happy if the message got home. And most important, I will be more happy if the people take action on that correctly in a way that, at least in the United States, that can be, it can be a peaceful society where people can be walking on their street and they say, okay, yes, in this place, I am safe. After all, that is your country. You should be safe at home. I think it's all right. Well, yeah, yeah. The United States to appreciate uh, some things that other countries um, have ensured because we we struggle and and trip over two things, Obehi. We trip over capitalist profit and what makes money. We we trip over that. We we get entangled in that, and then we we trip up over um, fear. And give me a moment. I want to give you an example of both. So there are some societies that are a lot more peaceful uh, than ours. And instead of investigating how peace and safety is working there, we will hold to how we've done things and continually assert that the way we we do them um, are, you know, constitutional. Case in point, the Second Amendment about the right to bear arms. Taking out of historical context, people are taking that to mean that any adult uh, should be able to purchase a gun and have a virtual arsenal at their house if that's what they want. And that is not actually the context in which that amendment was made. It was made because we were in a situation where people's homes were being invaded and people's privacy was being destroyed and they had no recourse. They didn't have an opportunity pr to protect themselves. Um, that the militia had more power uh, over a community than the men and women in that community. And so we, we take a right to its illogical extreme sometimes and we forget that our real job is to make sure that everyone does feel safe and that everyone is protected. And so when we make the right higher than the human value of safety and protection, you get 18 year olds who are legally able to go get a gun and then shoot up and murder children, right? The other issue is fear. When people have made fear their bedfellow, when people have made fear their friend, then they're unable to think outside the box other scenarios and other possibilities that would bring health and safety and protection to all because they are so afraid. So if you teach people to be afraid of Black people, if you teach people to be afraid of people with mental illness, if you teach people to be afraid of poor people, if you teach people to be afraid of people who have uh, sexual and gender uh, identities that are different than the mainstream, if people are afraid, then it becomes incredibly difficult for people to use our God-given imagination and begin to construct different options and possibilities for how we can make sure that we are as inclusive as possible and that everyone feels safe, everyone feels protected, everyone feels valued. You're not able to do that if you are hung up on the profit in something, or if you are entangled and ensnared in fear. You have to be pretty dang fearless in order to make a commitment to human rights, to equity, to fairness, to freedom. You can't be afraid of anything if you really believe in those things. And unfortunately, my country is still ensnared in a lot of fear.
Thank you for that. That is a powerful remark.